Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you the Somerset Review. I have been playing Somerset for about two weeks on PC and now it just also released on console, so everybody has finally access. Now this review will cover more or less everything, mostly the new Somerset zone and the new features. But I will also talk about stuff like the Crown Store, ESO Plus, Base Game and so on. So let's get started. My overall impression of Somerset is very positive. All the new features, the zone, the story, Suchigor, the jewelry crafting, the new mini trial and so on are very great additions to the game. Especially jewelry crafting which has been requested by fans for a long long time and is finally here and in my opinion it fits perfectly into the game. Of course there is also a few negative things which do not really concern the Somerset expansion, it's more about the base game with PvP and just the end game in general. But as a new player you will most likely not even notice those kind of things, so do not worry. Now let's take a look at the Somerset zone in general. Basically I have talked to quite a lot of people and everybody loves the new zone. The landscape, the architecture, everything looks very beautiful. If you go into the main city, Alinor, it looks very much alive. There is a lot of NPCs talking to each other and just a lot of players in general. So the city really feels alive. The first time I entered the Somerset zone, I was really quite amazed on how the zone looks like. It looks so alive when you just take a look at the landscape it looks very beautiful especially when we compare this to last year's expansion Morrowind when you take a look at the Morrowind it is like very darkish if you stay too long there you kind of feel depressed in my opinion but Somerset is like the contrary to Morrowind basically and I really really like it and I have talked to a lot of people and everybody loves the zone Another great thing about Somerset is, it is the first time where Zenimax actually tries to do something different with the architecture. So we have a lot of mountains and some of the cities are kind of close to the mountains or built in. So you have a lot of height difference in cities and so on and that just in my opinion even makes the zone more beautiful. I remember when I was watching the trailer that was actually one thing I was really looking forward to finally having like huge height differences which were not really in the game before Somerset and it really really looks freaking amazing. The main story like always is very well made. Elder Scrolls Online probably has one of the best questing systems due to extremely good voice acting and the Elder Scrolls lore just fits perfectly. In Somerset you will also find characters like Razum Daragan, one of the most famous and popular characters, non-player characters in Elder Scrolls Online. I do not want to go into too much detail, so that's more or less it, but you will not be disappointed if you're interested in the storyline, trust me. The next thing I want to talk about is the Suchig Order. This is a new guild or faction or whatever you want to call it which has been introduced with Somerset. They kind of live on a special island. As you can see, nobody really knows where they are. I don't want to go too much into the story of this, but mostly show you just quickly the new skill line. So you can find this in the guild section once you unlocked it. And there's quite a lot of interesting abilities. For example, like Meditate, which lets you restore resources. This is one and we also have the Temporal Guard, which is called the base morph is Undo. So what this does is it sets you back 4 seconds in time once you activate it. This is something really cool. All abilities are a really great addition to the game. I do have a separate video where I go into more detail. I will put the link in the description want to know more about the passives and skills in general. So the Suchig Order is a really cool addition to the game because it mixes up all existing builds, there is more diverse setups and so on because the abilities that are within the Suchig skill line are actually very good for a lot of setups so I really really like this. 
If you're new to the game and you only have one character, which you do the Suchik Order skill line leveling, it is quite cool. The dialogue that you get is very interesting and funny. However, I want to mention one negative thing about it. If you're a long time player like me, like I have over 30 characters, and if I want to get Suchik Order on every character, or maybe only on 5 or 10, it's always the same process, so it gets kind of stale after a while. Before we enter the next segment of this video, I just want to quickly talk about the music in Somerset. The music in general in Elder Scrolls Online is freaking amazing, and I thought it would be barely impossible to actually beat it, but with Somerset, the music they have created is, is unbelievable, so already for that it's kind of worth to get it. You really feel immersed into the zone with all this really nice music, so kudos to the music or audio team or whatever they are called. Really freaking amazing job. Now the next thing I want to talk about is jewelry crafting. This here is the main crafting hub of Somerset, which is located in the main city Alinor. So they basically have all the crafting stations here and now the one we are looking for is this here, jewelry crafting. This was probably one of the most requested, if not the requested, features to be added to the game. Because this opens up a lot of new combinations. So just to quickly showcase you, first off we have materials like always. That you need to farm, collect, to upgrade to green, blue, purple, and then the gold quality. You can create rings and necklace, and there is different traits. But when we take a look at the traits, I do have a separate video for that. But just to quickly go over them, like those are basically the basic traits we already had, and then there is six new ones. Try that, this increases the effect, this kind of makes you like. Your damage mitigation is higher, swift increases the movement speed. Especially nice for sneaky characters or when you want to farm things. Harmony increases synergy effects, which can be very powerful, especially on tanks. Blood Thirsty increases the damage against low health enemies, which is more for DPS characters and so on. But the traits, most of them are very, very good. And actually, that's why I really like this thing. Now I do have an article on my website how you can get those if you're interested. I will also put the link in the description. But in general, when we look at maybe my ring of agility here, I have Robust. Robust increases maximum stamina by 840. That's a lot. But if I would like, I could, for example, craft a ring with Triune, which increases health, magic and stamina. Sure, it will not give as much a value of this, but overall you will gain more stats. You might get like 400 health, magic and stamina. So you kind of have to make a trade-off. You can also now transmute jewelry. At the moment I am in a player house, so housing is another thing that Elder Scrolls Online offers, which is a lot of people like housing. So here we have the transmute station. What this does is basically, if you have traits researched, you can trade change existing jewelry. So for example, before, when you had, I don't know, heavy armor jewelry, let me try to find one. So here, this is a heavy armor. Heavy armor jewelry usually only comes in healthy traits, but now with the jewelry system, you can trade change it to any trait you want so this again opens a lot of new good gear combinations which makes build more which makes builds more diverse this is another great feature the only negative thing i have to say about jewelry crafting is that the materials are very rare so at the start it will be quite grindy till you can upgrade a purple ring to gold for example the jewelry traits to get them that's actually okay there is a lot of different ways some, some traits you get from 
questing, some you get from PvP, some you get from trials, some from dungeons. They really made a good job splitting that up for researching. Then again, to get gold materials, purple materials, it is quite the grind. Just as an information. But overall, I really like the system. Another thing that got improved is fishing. Mostly due to new things that can drop from fishing. Like, you, believe it or not, but fishing in this game is very, very popular. It, like, if you haven't tried it, go try it right now. Maybe you will get addicted to it, who knows. For example, like with Somerset, you can drop motifs from satchels that drop from fishing, when you're fishing. And just a lot of materials that you can get from fishing where you cannot get them anywhere else. So this is something quite cool. Just try it out. And as you can see, this dude here is fishing. My Kashid. I'm basically just waiting for him to get finished and then I will steal his things. Because... That's what Kashid do, I guess. Another new thing are guys here. As you can see, people behind me are very busy, you could say. And I'm just standing here. Those are similar to Dolmens from the base game. They have new bosses that you can kill and just group up with a lot of players. They also drop really... Holy mother, they almost... <laughs> they almost died. They drop a lot of valuable items as well and are quite fun to do. There is also a new mini trial, it's called Cloud Rest, which got introduced with the Somerset chapter. And this is a 12 man mini trial, so you need 12 group members. And there is a normal and a veteran mode. The veteran mode is quite difficult, but however, if you just want to enjoy the story, for example, I really, really can recommend the normal mode. You don't need a lot of experience to actually be able to play in the normal mode. So I recommend finding a guild and trying it out. The mini trial is really fun. It's a mini trial, so you will mostly fight bosses and there will not be a lot of trash fights. So if you don't like long dungeons or long trials, this might be the right choice for you. Mini trials are shorter than full trials so if you have never tried a trial or a mini trial then definitely go for it all you need to do is find a guild or 12 group members otherwise you will not be able to complete it i have a lot of gameplay footage from this on my youtube because that's mostly what i do in endgame we complete veteran trials 12 man trials so if you're interested in more footage about this, definitely check it out. That more or less covers most new features of the Somerset expansions. I want now to talk about things like the Crown Store, SO Plus, base game and so on. Like what the endgame looks like, etc. So when we take a look at the Crown Store, this has been in the game for quite a while. A lot of people are afraid whether it's paid to win or not, but it is definitely not paid to win. I have never felt left out because I did not purchase something in this store. You can mostly buy cosmetic things, for example, like costumes if you want to. There's a lot of cool costumes. Even hats, you can buy mounts if you want to and so on. Etc. Now, you can also buy XP boosters. A lot of people complain about that, but the thing is, you can also craft those XP boosters in-game. So it is not that big of a deal. And even without XP boosters, you level up quite efficiently. Like this MMO is not that grindy. That's what I really like about it and that's why I have so many characters. The only thing I really do not like about this is the crown crates. Those are crates that you can buy and the items you get in there are RNG based. And there is very rare Apex mounts which you only can get through crates. Now when you buy crates and you open things and you get useless stuff, you can get crown champs for it and then you can buy the stuff you could get in the crates with crown champs. But there is also Apex mounts which can only be like uh, received through RNG boxes. So it's kind of like gambling. 
it's only cosmetics, but still, I do think it's not... I don't like it. But yeah, it's just cosmetics, so you don't necessarily have to buy them. That's it about the crown store. Now, another cool thing I want to talk about is as a plus membership. A lot of people probably don't exactly know what this is. It's basically a subscription. You don't need to pay a subscription for this game. However, as a plus membership is kind of the subscription of ESO. It gives you a little bit more experience, gold, inspiration, and trade research. Then you also gain access to a crafting bag, which stores all your crafting materials, which is very nice. If you are a crafter, you kind of want this, otherwise your main inventory will always be full. We have all your gear etc here and then the crafting bag is completely separate so you can store all of your materials here. So that's very very good for that alone, as a plus is already worth it if you are a regular player. On top of that, you also get 1.5k crowns every month from the subscription. Now if you would, own, if you would buy 1.5 crowns separately, it costs about the same as the as a plus subscription. So if you ever have bought something in the crown store and you don't have the subscription, so I really recommend getting it. Another thing I almost forgot to mention, holy moly. Now, if you have ESO plus, you also get access to all the DLCs in this game. So I for example, I don't own most DLCs, but because I have ESO plus, I can play Thieves Guild, Clockwork City, Shadows of the Hist, Orsinium, Imperial City, Horns, and all those other things for free. What, when I would take away my ESO Plus membership, I would not get access to those things anymore. But if you, for example, want to enjoy, don't know, maybe the Orsinium storyline, which is probably one, if not the best, in the game, you can get ESO Plus for a month, play it through, then drop the ESO Plus membership, and voila! So this is a really cool feature with the subscription as well. I'm just uh, kind of trying to say, you basically want ESO Plus if you're playing Elder Scrolls Online regularly. If you buy Somerset, you will obviously also have access to the base game. And the base game alone offers content for like two years or one year if you're a casual player. Like all those zones here, those zones, this is Ebonheart Pack, then we have Daggerfall Covenant here, this zone. And Almeri Dominion is here. So those zones and Kraklorn with Surudil included, Cold Harbor, you all get this for free as well. And the storyline of the base game is also very entertaining, so it's also worth checking out. Maybe after you finish Somerset or even before you finish Somerset. It's, it's like I really enjoyed this when I first time played free. You can see I basically have every way shrine on this character. <laughs> There is also a lot of DLC areas, like I said, if you're ESO Plus, you will get it. Hughes Bane, Gold Coast, so here is Thieves Guild, this is Dark Brotherhood. Then we have Rothgar here, which is basically a DLC, but equivalent of an expansion, no joke. Morrowind here, which is also a very nice zone, and so on, so the game offers a lot. Now I want to talk about other features, for example, Battlegrounds now are included in the base game. Before they were included in Morrowind, so only people that had Morrowind could play Battlegrounds. But now they're in the base game, so they have gotten more popular. So more and more people are playing Battlegrounds because not everybody had Morrowind, obviously. So this is this here. PvP in Elder Scrolls Online is quite tough in my opinion, especially if you're a new player, so a lot of people kind of avoid it till they know the base mechanics and still then. You basically need to play the game one year or more to really understand what you're doing, how to counter attacks, what the enemies do and so on. I still recommend checking out Battlegrounds, you don't need to go to Surudil for that. Battlegrounds are fun to play. And there is kind of an MMR system, so you shouldn't get set up against really high-ranked players. So you should kind of play with people in your league. So I do enjoy Battlegrounds this patch quite a lot. I mainly actually play Battlegrounds when I do PvP. Because they're kind of fast-paced and one match takes like 10 to 15 minutes. And then 
it's basically back to normal. There is lobby battlegrounds, so level 1 to 50, so you don't get set up against other like maxed out characters. And even when you're after level 50, what you want to do is get to about 160 champion points. That sounds like a lot, but you can get it in 2-3 days. It's really not that much because of the progression system, which is accelerated a lot at the start. Why 160 champion points? Because that's where the gear cap is at. And Senimax hasn't increased the gear cap in like 2 years because there's no point really to increase it in this game. That's why it's great, you don't need to refarm gear every patch. Once you have 160 champion points, you can craft max level gear, then go into the battlegrounds. Because the champion points cap is at 750, but in battlegrounds it's non-champion points, so the champion points are deactivated. So you only need the 160 champion points gear and you're good to go. That's what I really like about those things. It also makes the games a little bit more balanced. Surudil is another kind of story. Surudil is about huge battles, however there is where a game kind of starts to, well, not fall apart. Surudil has a lot of latency issues. So if there are too many players on one spot fighting against each other, those big sieges, it really gets laggy. And that's my biggest negative point about Elder Scrolls Online. Surudil just does not function. That's it. It does not. It used to be set up for huge battles where basically 600 versus 600 versus 600 players were fighting, but they reduced it to 150 versus 150 versus 150. So the map is too big for the small amount of player that can be in there. And when there is too many players on one place, it's still laggy as hell. That's why I do prefer Battlegrounds. So most problems are kind of tied to the end game because if you're a max level player in PvP or mostly in PvP there is really strong combinations and very, how, how should I say, shady setups that are not very balanced. So in end game the game is not that good balanced in my opinion at all, nor in PvP and in PvE. Some classes feel really nice to play in endgame, some kind of feel kind of useless, so in terms of balancing the endgame they do not do a really good job. But as a new player that does not really concern you that much yet. At this point I think I talked enough, so to just quickly summarize everything I said. The only negative points I really have is the endgame balance, which is not that good, and the lag in Suridil that seems not to get fixed at all, and it just feels empty. But all other things, all the new Somerset additions, just the game in general, as a new player is 1000% worth getting. Especially if you love exploring, there is so much things to do, character customization is great. You can meet new people if you'd like to, do dungeons and so on. But the game is definitely, definitely worth checking out. That's more or less it from me. If you want to watch me live, I am on Twitch all the time, streaming. Please also make sure, do not forget to subscribe. I do have a Discord channel, which is all about Elder Scrolls Online. If you want, you can come lurk in there. I really recommend it if you're not sure about Elder Scrolls or you're very confused, there is always people that will help you. Now, that's more or less it. The video is quite long, apologies for that. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below and maybe let me know what you think about Somerset, if you have already played it. Thanks for watching and have a freaking amazing day. Cheers.